Psalms 89. What are we going to dig out here? And starting in verse 2, it says, Of Yahweh's chesed, or kindness, I will sing forever. I will make your faithfulness known to every generation with my mouth. For I said, forever will kindness be built. The heavens you establish your faithfulness in them. Well, this word faithfulness, mentioned twice here, is the word amuna, or amunteka, your faithfulness. The word amuna is where we get the word belief, or faith. A trust also? Does it mean trust? There's a certain degree of that, but it's used back when Yahweh spoke to Avraham and said, hey, go out and count the stars if you're able to. Of course, Abraham can't count the stars. Nobody can count the stars, even with telescopes. They keep finding more and more. But this word, it says, well, he believed, and it was attributed to him as righteousness. So we think, oh, well, just believe, and that's as good as being righteous. But this word belief is amuna, which is translated here, faithfulness being faithful, being responsible, trustworthy. This word amuna, or where we get amen, so be it, is also means trained, educated, reliable, trustworthy, confident, secure, an artisan, a craftsman, a specialist, someone if you give them a job to do, they'll go out and do it and they'll do it right and you know that if you've commissioned them that you could just rest easy that it'll be done properly. That's the word and for Avraham to be having a Muna means, the way I see this, is that he went out and suffered the stars. He didn't just believe and, oh, well, whatever. He went out and did what he was told to do. To suffer is the word for book. It's the word to narrate, give something a shape. I believe he went out and connected the dots between the stars and designed the constellations. That's suffering the stars. And to say that, that, that he was faithful and responsible as a skilled artisan means he had to apply a lot of time and attention to do the very thing he was told to do. And yet we've, at least I've, been, you might say, led to believe one way or another that he didn't have to do anything. That's contrary to what it says. Faithful means he will keep his word. And this here says that Yahuwah himself has established his faithfulness, like the heavens, or the story in the heavens, declares how faithful is. So, in other words, we can believe every word he says. That's interesting because you know that a lot of the Christians just say, "Well, we're in co Abrahamic covenant. That's it. You know, just believe. That's it. And believe that what he said, he will do." I and agree. there's words here that says, verse 47, Psalms 89. Until when, Yahweh, will you constantly hide yourself? Will your that's a strange phrasing. Until when will you constantly hide yourself? Will your wrath burn like fire? What it, what it means to say is, how long will you hide yourself? Why are you hiding yourself? You're, you're just always appearing like you're pouring out anger. Why don't you help us? Why don't you be nice to us? Why don't you do what your words say? The first half of this chapter here that says he will favor us, and then the whole second half of this chapter is him kicking his people around and tormenting them there with all sorts of uh, ruin. It, the critical part right in the middle goes back to this. This is what we want to talk about. Righteousness and justice are your throne's foundation. Righteousness and justice. That's Zadikah and Mishfat. Kindness and truth precede your countenance. That's Chesed and Emmet precede your countenance. I don't even know what that means. Praises to the people who know the shofar's cry. I don't even know what that means. Sh know what a shofar <laughs> sounds like? Know to how to interpret the sound of a trumpet? Know the four sounds. No <laughs> Hashem, by the illumination of your countenance, they walk. How is his countenance illuminated? Nobody can see his face. What does this even mean? In your name they rejoice all day long. What does that mean, to rejoice in his name? You can rejoice you know his name, but most people don't. They call him either Hashem or Adonai or Lord or God. or He never said that was his name. How do you rejoice in his name? 
rejoice that you are His, rejoice that you have your sins forgiven and you believe you're going to heaven. Some people rejoice that they have their sins forgiven or going to heaven and can't wait to meet Him. But what Yeshua said, when they do meet Him, He's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, anomio in Greek, quarrelessness, lawlessness is what that word means. In other words, they believe they had a relationship, they have their sins forgiven, going to heaven, that they are saved, that they're born again, that they expect to be in heaven, and he's going to say, I never knew you. Depart from me. That's the scariest verse in the entire Bible. Yes, and he's going to say it to many, and there will be great grief. What does it mean to rejoice in his name? Through your righteousness they are exalted. What does that mean? In his righteousness. Well, righteousness is doing what he said. Because he defines righteousness. His instructions, if you keep them, that's righteousness. If you don't keep his instructions, that's not righteousness. Simple definition. Do what he said is righteousness. Don't do what he said, that's unrighteousness. So by doing what he said, we are exalted. For you who are the splendor of their power and for you are the splendor of their power and through your favor our pride will be exalted. Our pride exalted? We're not supposed to have pride. What's this even talking about? For to Hashem belongs our shield and to the Holy One of Israel our King. This makes no sense. What I'm trying to say is I can read these simple English words and I can't tell anything what this is talking about. He goes on to say, My faithfulness and my kindness shall be with him, and through my name his power shall be exalted. Is he talking about King David? Is he talking about the Messiah? Is he talking about Israel? Or is he talking about me and you or any person? Forever shall I preserve my kindness, that's the word chesed, for him, and my covenant shall be shall remain true to him. If his sons should forsake my Torah and not walk in my judgments, if they should profane my statutes and not observe my commandments, then I will punish their transgression with a rod and their iniquity with plagues. But I shall not utterly remove my kindness from him, and I will not be false to my faithfulness. He goes on to talk about, but the next verse here, listen to this. I shall not profane my covenant, and I shall not alter the utterance of my lips. Now, if Yahweh is faithful, Amuna, then I better count on these words. I will not alter the utterance of my lips. I heard someone say once, well, God doesn't change, but he changes the rules. <laughs> if he changes the rules, then he changed these words, and he just swore by his amen, amuna, faithfulness, that he will not ever change his rules. Well, what does this mean? Like I said, this is pretty hard to understand. But if we go back and read Zadik and Mishfat. Mishfat is the feeling, and then petov means to be stalemate or agreement, or shaking hands, the place of balanced scales and the way we, we treat one another. Makon has to do with alignment, direction, guidance, aiming. It's where we get the word mechanical and a tuning fork. So something here is locked in solidly as a tuning fork if you want the exact pitch. A mechanical apparatus is something built to be automatically the same every time. Your throne, kaseka, chesed, kindness, the emet, truth, and this word in front of your face or before you, the word ikomo literally means to go out first or preceded or have priority or be of the beginning, the origin, or the ancient. That's the same word as paleo. This word paleo not only is at the beginning and the ancient, but it, it's actually, if we go back to what he said at the beginning, it will be like sending a pioneer out to establish a place and be the welcoming committee for everybody else that's going to come or everything else that we expect to happen. We have to go back to what he said 
how he showed his face in the beginning. But this next verse, verse 16, is really where we want to talk about here. But this verse 15 is just to say that in righteousness and justice and in balanced scales of right ruling is where he has established and aimed his throne. And of course in the famous prayer of our Father, the Lord's Prayer as some people call it, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The establishment of his kingdom means we have to do what he said, not just believe, not like Abraham saying, oh, okay, whatever you say, no, get up and do what he said. That's amuna, that's faithfulness. But here's what he said, ashri ha'am, which is to say, blessed, validated, authentic, praiseworthy is the people, e yod, yodai, which is basically where you get the word yoda, like in Star Wars, which it means to know, or he knows, knows my, or knows me, and here's the word tarua. Well, it's translated as the trumpet cry. But this word tarua also is not only a war cry or a trumpet blast, but is where we get the word roy, which is shepherd. But it also means thought, purpose, shout, ideas, or intention. It's the word for the shepherd or to pasture and graze, which would be the word for guided, ruled, and directed, or keeping company. So you then the next word Yahweh. So you could say praiseworthy or blessed or or to become valid is the people who can understand and know Yahweh's ideas his thoughts his purposes the word for longing and striving is also that same word spelled with resh ayin or resh vav ayin it's simply translated the trumpet cry so what i'm saying is that if you read this as trumpet cry, cry tarua you will miss the whole idea that it's knowing the heart, ideas, and purposes that Yahweh has, where, he said, where Yeshua says, I am the good shepherd. The word for shepherd is guiding and leading and directing in the place of his association, keeping company. And then this word, Be'or Peneka, in the light of your face. This word, Or, for light, also means learning, where we get the word Orion, Orion, which is that pertaining to the enlightenment of teaching his Torah, his instructions. It also is where we get the word orthography, orthography, which is the shape of letters, the drawing of the shape of letters, which so you can learn how to read. Also the word for orthodox, which is correct. This is Beor, in light or with enlightenment. It also means air and ventilate, which is where you get the word for ruach, which is the wind, which is also translated spirit. So you could say the spirit or that which is in his, in his mind, in his heart, is this word. Paneka, your face. Well, the word pene also means turning or expression or tendency. It has to do with yod he lamed kaf vav nun. He will halakha, walk, conduct, the manner of the flowing course or the shining as being led and guided. So as Yahweh's face is turned toward, a face has many expressions. When you learn the expression of Yahweh's face, it's done by being able to read the letters that he gave us in his Torah which are the expressions of his ideas. And if you want to receive his blessing and be regarded as a praiseworthy person, we need to know, there's a confidence there, yada, da'at, knowing his expressions. Next verse, 17. Be Shem Ka, in your Shem. Now it's translated name, but Shem, remember, is also fame, renown, and occupation. It's also the word there, which means where you're at. To know Yahweh's name is not, how do you pronounce yod heh vav -Heh, or just call him the Lord. You know, he's the big guy in the sky. What does his face smile at? What does he get angry at? And both those expressions are all through scriptures. 
in his name or knowing him, the word igilon, basically nagila, is to joy, gladness, exultation, rejoicing every day, all day, or this day. And then this word bezadik teka, which is to say what you have determined to be righteousness, i romo, that man who is in your name finding gladness, he will be lifted up. And this is where we also get the word for harmony, palatial, and also to receive permission or by decree. So what he's saying is that if we go back and regard his Shem, which is to say, know him. How do you know him? Well, what's his name? There's four letters in his name, but then he also said his name was Ehiyeh Asher Ehiyeh, which means I am that I am, or I will be what I will be. It's more than four letters, although Ehiyeh is four letters, but I would maintain, as we've said in other talks here, that the 22 letters of the alphabet are his Shem. That's who he is and where he's at. And if we understand rejoicing in this revelation of who he is, how he's described himself, where his heart is at, where his ideas are at, to the man that rejoices in knowing him, knowing who he is, what he thinks, what he approves of and what he disapproves of, which will not change what he told Adam, what he told Avraham, what he told Moshe, what he told David, what Yeshua spoke, all these words are the same words, not changed according to his own words. We will be raised up. Verse 18, so thus therefore, or it might mean when, and then this word taparta. Well, this word fa'ar or pa'ar, literally like this tree, means to be adorned, beautified, glorified, headdress, diadem, turban, or bow and branches. So like these branches coming out of the top of my head, or like the, the branches, the boughs adorn this tree, is this word. When, you might say, when what? When we live into the calling. Ozam, strength, courage, with a strong will, ata, you, very serious or aggravated, exalt our horn. Going back to Zechariah 2, where there's these four horns. It has to do with ringing cry. It says he basically himself looks forward to that day where we do what he says so that he can lift up the situation, the status of this entire world predicament. The last verse here, 19, La Yahweh, unto him, Ma Ganano, which is to say, when suitable, there will be protection and defense as in a garden for la kadosh, for unto the betrothed, or he is reserved to be set apart, Israel melech no, which would be, say, Israel's kingship. He has reserved and set apart when Israel starts behaving. In the word Israel, yeshar means straight and el means strong. When Israel, his people, as set apart, do things properly, right, as he said, with a serious, strong will to be his people, walking in his ways, then that thing which we have looked forward to will arise by what we do because it's an automatic mechanism. How many of who has to do what, when, with what heart, for how long before this happens? It's an immediate thing. When we do what he says, like throwing a pebble into a pond, the ripples are automatically there. So too, when we who choose to be his people, wherever we were born into, from whatever nation, whatever custom, whatever religion or language, when any of us who decide to be his people take this seriously and follow his decrees and ordinances, his mitzvot, his chokhim, his edot, as he said in Halakha, walk his derek, his way, it will happen because he himself looks forward with great anticipation for the day when it will manifest what has been on his heart all along. It is right upon us, before us, at our feet, in our hands to do his pleasure. I hope to see it immediately. Hallelujah, Eric. I love it when I give you the one minute sign because you really start pouring it on. <laughs> Good job, brother.